Hi guys, Robert here again. And we're going to look at uh, more in depth linear and radial arrays. I probably should have did this exercise before I did the last video because I got a lot of questions. So um, now here, what we're doing here, I've got two elements here. And um, I'm just going to show you how this process works. In this file, I got two objects. I just loaded into the family, so they nested families. So, so if I select one of them, I bring up the modified palette, and from here, I'm going to select the ray. Now, I've made mention of keeping your eye on the options bar for arrays. This is especially important. Look at the amount of information we have on the options bar here. We can specify linear, a radial array. We want to group and associate the objects and the number of objects. And the move to defines whether the object selected is the second object or the last object. And then finally, constrain. This means we can constrain the move to a vertical or horizontal direction. The first thing wants to, Revit wants me to do is wants me to create a copy. So on the status bar, it asks me in the remove start point. So I'm just going to type in 250 and press enter. Now I'm now presented with the number of the array. And this is the default from the options bar. And I can change this number at any point in time. So I now have, say, five. Now I have, now I have five objects. And they're still part of the model group. So I can change this number, and I can move these objects relative to one another. And as you can see, the spacing stays the same. So I can type in any, move at any distance. I can even drag them. And I can just, just drag this guy here. Now, if I make a copy of one of these other elements here, I'm going to copy this. Rotate this. Uh, let's say I want to rotate this 90 degrees. And say I want to include it into my array. Now, these elements are part of an array group. I can edit the group and I can add. So I can go collect here, go edit group. And then I can add this element here. Click finish. And my array is updated. So that's pretty simple how that works. Okay, now let's look at uh, a radial array. So let's go back. I select this object on the screen, and let's go with array, and then a radial array. Now, Rivet is asking me for a center of rotation, which is this. And so I can just select here. I can go. I can place the center point right here. And we click on the start point and an angle which I want my rate to occur. And here I can change this number in this array. Let's say I can say four. But there's a limit I can. Okay, let's go back here. I want to want to show you something here. I want to just take you back for a second. Oh, no. Nope. That's good. We want to keep that. So now let's look at this uh, radial array again. So I'll select this element. I'll click on array. And if in radio, and then it says really wants me to place a center point. So I want to go place. And I'll select this as my center. And then. Um, I'll just make a, a second point here, 
and let's give that a distance of uh, say 30 degrees and there's my radial array so it's pretty straightforward now in this instance I can change these angles and I can change this number say I want to make this uh, 6 And I can also change the angle here. I can drag this. So, so these are another, again, these are uh, a group. So if I select this, I want to edit this group. So any changes we want to do within this group, we can say if I want to rotate this or anything, that's how that happens. So I just wanted to show you this quick little video of how linear and uh, angular array works. So when you're using these in families, it's important to lose this grouping intact. It's not really important in a project environment, but in here, it's, uh, it's very important. So I did arrays a lot a while back, uh, and I want to just do this quick video to show you how it really works and how you can understand how array works. So basically, uh, very simple. So I should have put this video in front of the last. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next video. I know people are getting tired of families, but maybe we'll do a little project coming up. Thanks again, and I'll see you next video. Bye.